This is an introduction to a series of videos that I'll be releasing over time. It will be about reassembly of a, a Nissan VK45DE engine. This is not a full rebuild by any means. It's just in the way of maintenance. If whatever circumstances brought you to having to replace an engine or install an engine, these are some things you could do to help you give your, lot, your engine a breath of fresh air. So my videos are never meant to be instructional booklets for professionals by any means. This is not going to be used. I do not intend for it to be used as, an, as a shop manual by any means. It's just a way to share with people my experiences. And my intention with YouTube had always been to share and make uh, vehicle maintenance less mysterious for, for the masses, you know. A lot of people... Uh, do go to stores or to shops and just get you know just pay money for things that they tell you and i wanted to say that basically with a decent selection of tools anybody almost anybody can work on cars so this is in that line of things that or that this is in that nature that i recorded these videos i have worked on the vk45 de engines for quite some time and i've shared some of my learnings over the years but i something got into me and i got the time and set up the equipment and i decided to show more than a glimpse of what i usually have to deal with when i have to install one of these engines so there's a lot of footage uh, i haven't done a full a complete engine replacement video because uh you do need someone to to hold the camera for that long and uh, also to edit it, it does take quite some time. For example, for, for what I'll be doing here, uh, this is just installing seals to a point where the engine is ready to be installed in the car. I think I have about 15 hours of footage just as, you know, just to give a scale to it. So I'm going to go through it. Um, it does take some time. I mean, the I take a little longer than I usually take to work because I'm doing it with the intention of sharing. I'm doing it with the intention of showing it on video. So I do call out torque values. I do call out tool sizes. These are things that I, you know, when working, I just basically blaze through. So not exactly double the time, but maybe one, one and a half times as long would not be too much of an exaggeration. And uh, as I said, so I will talk about how to replace different accessories, how to change seals, how to replace gaskets, this and that, uh, thermostats, the consumables, you know, and you don't, technically, you don't really need, need to do all these things, you know, except maybe your valve covers and your spark plugs, you know, things that do actually get you because these engines can run to 300,000 miles without you having to replace your thermostat or your crankshaft seals or anything. It's just that I feel my, my, my principle is that while you have the engine out there, why not give your engine a breath of fresh air, right? Give it new seals. Let it run for, you know, till 600 or 200, you know, 500. Just basically add more life to it. Why not? So I do go over these things and um, who, who could value, who could uh, benefit from this kind of video or from these videos? People who have to replace their engines for one. Um, people who maybe are just curious I think a, a large group of people would be people who own or have bought 2006 and up Infinity M45s um, and need to replace them. So here's a little diversion, but uh, back when I started tinkering with these engines, the cost of a used engine from a junkyard with maybe questionable or higher miles was about 3500 on the low end, $4,000. It's kind of what it cost. And that was just parts not counting labor. And at the time, I, to, you know, to the masses, it was maybe more on the pioneering side, I decided to get into the Japanese engines. So the ex-Japan engines, JDM as I call them, Japanese domestic model. And I was able to share some learnings from that in that if you bought a Japanese model engine and you change the intake oil pan, water pump, you know, just a few things, coolant tubes, you would be able to use such an engine in an American vehicle. And back then it wasn't too expensive, but think about how far we've come in about four years. People can replace the engines in there, or people can, people can get an Infinity M45 engine for about $900 shipped to the door with the transmission attached. So we have come a long way with regards to engines and how much it really costs to to do a re repair. Of course, the best 
a way to do it is prevent the issue in the first place, you know, maintain your engine so that you don't have to replace them. But some people, me included, do actually go out there hunting for, for cars with bad engines. So if that's your line of work, here's something to help you maybe over the process. You definitely don't have to watch the whole video. Hopefully you have an idea what you're doing, but um, I would hope that if you're trying to sell an engine to people do, or if you intend to keep it for yourself, at least repair a few things, you won't replace a few seals. So that's what this, um, this series of this playlist is going to be just things, my experiences, sharing my experiences with, uh, with engine work. And it's going to talk about replacing seals, uh, all the way up to, I think, uh, mating the engine and mating the engine and the transmission. I, yeah, I think even connecting the wiring harness. So everything, but it's uh putting it into the into the car because that's a little more work and recording video you just wouldn't see much from where i'd have to put the camera so um i hope the series of videos will be informative or beneficial in a way and uh, without further ado i think i'll just cut into the footage that i recorded when i was doing the work hello guys here's the engine it's a vk45 de it's an Infiniti M45 engine. Well, it is a JDM engine that's going to go into an Infiniti M45. I've already made most of the changes that I need. I've placed the intake that I'm going to be using. That is the one from the 06 M45 on there. The oil pan is still the one from the JDM engine. It was just there for placement because I did not have my 06 oil pan yet. But I ended up pulling it out. And there it is. So right now, what I'm going to do is place the timing cover on. I also need to, you know, you can see that the water pump is not there. So I'll address that as well. Timing cover, water pump. I'll do the coolant tubes. You can see here there's nothing under the intake, between the intake and the, on the valley, the block. I will install that as well. This one has only been loosely placed, so I'll take that off as well and do everything that I need to do underneath it then come back and install the intake later on this side back here I will be replacing the rear rear crank seal and obviously as I mentioned the oil pan so usually what I like to do is this I'd like to interfere with things as little as possible so one of the first things I'll do is install you can see this right here so this is part of the oil pan and the oil pan has basically makes contact with the bottom side of the of the rear cover and the this is the rear cover right here okay so you install this this way over here and there's a rear main seal and then the oil pan comes up and bolts to the bottom side of this it's just two 10 millimeter bolts but still so you don't want to install this later and end up scraping all the rtv sealant off right so this is going to go first before this goes on okay that's one reason i'll take that off and i'll show you a trick i i made a tool to remove the the rear main seals from these engines just because i needed something quick not too expensive for the front uh, front crank seal front crankshaft seal I could just get a, a flathead screwdriver and just pry it this way but this is a little too large I was afraid I was gonna lose grip and end up scratching something okay so this is where the the front crank seal goes and right now the spacer does not want to go anywhere it's fine we'll leave it for now here is the crank seal, the crank, uh, the timing cover, sorry. And the crank seal usually goes into that hole. I already removed it. As I said, this thing is pretty much ready. I'll just give it one final, final wipe. Same here. I already scraped whatever needed to be scraped. It's now a matter of giving it one final wipe while I have the RTV and then just slap it on there. It's easy in theory. So, what you're going to see now is me removing the 
the bottom the oil pan from the bottom again same thing I was talking about in the back because you have four bolts that come in from the oil pan into the timing cover you don't can you even do it any other way it doesn't look like it so the best way is remove the oil pan first have the timing cover on then you can bring the oil pan from the bottom I'm very determined to do the uh, the front and the back right now so that I can give it time to sit and cure and then I'll come in later and do the do the oil pan I, I did not want to move too many wet pieces if that makes sense while the front timing cover is still drying that come in and well before it's even fully cured come in from the bottom and start tightening personally I just don't want to do that I know it's probably not a problem to a lot of people but that's just my style okay so we'll put the camera on a stand and just watch work work happening <laughs> 